The following situation. Uh, we have a variable displacement motor and it sounds a kind of lousy. And everyone says, whoa, this has to sound better. Then many engineers go and measure the sound pressure level and say, oh, this has to get smaller now. Ultimately, always with the hope that if it's lower quietly enough, it will then be masked by some ambient noise and it will no longer be audible. And if I can't hear the noise, then the problem is gone. Yes, it works, but it's a huge effort to lower that level that much. But that's not necessary at all. It's enough if the motor sounds good. I even want to hear it. I would like to get the feedback. Now it's working for me. It runs. I also turn up the volume of good music. I want to hear a sports car feedback. It's much easier to work on the sound quality on the noise instead of just bluntly pushing the level down and hoping that someone else will mask it for me now. I'm introducing roughness here today. This is one of those psychocoustic analysis that just helps you realize, is my sound good or bad? What do I need to change to make it sound better to a human being? All this now and here. Roughness is an illusion, a fallacy of the human auditory system. But it exists and we have to deal with this effect. I've prepared a simple example for this explanation here. I have there a continuous sine tone at 1000 Hz and a second tone that gradually drops in frequency. The proof of the matter is that the human auditory apparatus cannot separate frequency that, that are close together. We cannot perceive them as two frequency. We only ever hear one of the tones However, the other tone is not completely ignored, but it leads to a strongly altered auditory impression of the first tone. Let's listen to this. At the beginning, both tones are at the same pitch and we hear a fluctuation. Then such a ah, then quite nasty. And now as the tones continue to separate suddenly two tones, then calm and beautiful again. For those occurring effects, there is in each case an analysis paying attention to it. I add them here. Once the fluctuations change over time, for roughness there are also different analyses. I take all of them right away, then they have also seen the differences right away. And say calculate. Now let's just look at the first area where the tones are still close together. There is the fluctuation strange our analysis which shows there is this amplitude modulation which we perceive as a strong fluctuation. We play that back again. This is the range. Although both tones are actually equally loud all the time, we perceive only one strongly modulated tone. <laughs> this happens at 10 Hz frequency spacing. At larger frequency intervals, a completely different effect comes in. You can see it quite nicely here below. It sounds like a kind of There is the so-called R roughness. We feel this as a frequency spacing of 30 Hz. We see the value for the roughness increases even more here in this range. It has at maximum that is at a frequency spacing of 70 Hz. It sounds the simple just nasty, restless, pressed. Back here the tones separate so much and extend that they are perceived as two tones and the perceived roughness disappears. These analyses show me that. There are, as you can see, different analyses. Here in the middle is the classic roughness. This is from the days when acoustic analysis was filtered using analog resonance circuits. Below is Head's own development of roughness. We found that this effect doesn't follow such a linear relationship at all. It's easier built, of course, but um, the effect always comes in spurts like this, depending on the frequency spacing. You can use both, but the lower analysis is better. So how do I apply this analysis in practice? I'll take my airplane example again and calculate the A weighting, sound pressure level, the loudness, which we have also learned before, and the roughness from acoustics. 
and look at it all together. The airplane flies by and we see the level and loudness increases a little bit in the middle. The roughness behaves differently. Present at the beginning, it then rises to its highest value here at 6 seconds, only to disappear again right after that. There's no correlation to level here. You should really listen to this now. The airplane is approaching, struggling, a little tense. Yes. And now abruptly only in fluid. I'm playing this second special. Here is such a press. It can't no longer. But if I now go a little bit further back, then it's just completely relaxed. The effect is gigantic. Also, the level is even higher here, so the plane is louder. It sounds relaxed and easygoing in proportion. Before, stringed. That means we now have an unfavorable frequency pairing in this range around 6 seconds, which gives us the impression that the airplane is tense here. And we have to find it now. Quite classically, we use an f of t versus time and simply look at all the frequency ones. Right? We have a lot of frequency pairs in there. Now we can start looking for the frequency range where there is a distance of about 70 Hz between two adjacent frequency lines. Um, have fun. <laughs> yeah, I can put the cursor from there to there. That's 150 Hz. No, uh, that's no, not here. From there to there. No. That can't be it. It must be easier. It can't be. Can there be analysis which just tell me, look, there is your problem? Of course, there is. It's called specific roughness analysis. Here, also the hearing model. This classic roughness from back then that um, I needed a special permission on my license to have this old analysis still in my software. I we deliberately refrained from using that. Okay, this is what it looks like. Zack. On one picture, the analysts show me when and which frequency range my airplane is rough. Let's listen to this again. Now I can just read it out. It's ten and a half bark. Ah. Uh, that's when a lot of people are out again. <laughs> what the hell is a bark? Well, that's the native scale of human frequency resolution. That's what it's all about. Mm, if that blocks you, understand that, um, then you can switch that, of course. Then we go here to settings and set the frequency scale from bark to hertz. There I know my way around and recalculate. Then I get this range displayed again in hertz, roughly at 1380 hertz. So back to the FFT, there are frequency pairs which lie simply awkwardly. Between here and there, there are 77 Hz. From there to there again, 78 Hz. That's where the impression is created. That means if I now simply take out this middle frequency, then I have the effect twice that I can reduce the roughness. Now I have two possibilities. Either I now rebuild the aeroplane again and make sure that this frequency would not longer occur in this time. And then make a new measurement. I think in 7-8 months we will have a comparison and then we can see what we get out of it. <laughs> or I have a tennis. I can simply try out the effect with a sound engineering tool. How many dB do I have to lower the sound to achieve which effect? I can do this in two minutes. I go to edit my measurement with the sound engineering project. There I load my measurement into it. That was plane A. I take the brush tool and this is the easiest. There we have our sound again. Now let's just take this one away. There we go. A little bit there too. Um, it's like Photoshop. Well, sure, taking away will always be better somehow, but we can also choose another area as a reference where there is no interfering noise. Now I can use the noise to override this tonal area. The ambient level is preserved, but we just take out the interfering noise, just the roughness. Now we've operated out this frequency level neutrally and can look directly once what would bring us this measure in total effects. I can reproduce it. 
Now I have a clean flute without this exaggerated cramped impression. I can now write this as a new measurement as if I had just measured the airplane in this way. And just without the effort of actually building it at all first. So I see, is this a possibility? Does this bring the needed effect improvement? Is that enough? Let's take a look. I look in my current results. They are already the measurements files from the sound engineering. Plane A without one frequency component. And I compare that against the original measurement. I take the roughness and the specific roughness just side by side in the data view. Here is the original measurement. At 6 seconds we have the largest deflection of roughness and it's gone now. We have eliminated its cleanly. You can also see it well in 2D diagrams. The high value at 6 seconds is clearly reduced here. I can also superimpose the graphs. This one was the original measurement. This one was the small surgical procedure that only a single tone of the carpet of orders was filled with equivalent noise. The roughness decreases significantly and thus the fact of the overall noise improves. Now I can go to my boss with a proud chest and say, this is what we can have, okay? I've already simulated this. You can listen to the effect once. We have to find the guilty one in this one sound, okay? We have to stiffen it, um, shift it, move it, change it, so it won't sound so unpleasant to a human being anymore. That was roughness analysis from Head Acoustic, which I've been using for years to optimize sound design. Rumor has is that there's work underway, again, to make this analysis even more powerful, though there will be an update to this already most advanced roughness analysis. When that comes out, I will definitely post another video about it here. I'm interested in myself how powerful this can be, okay? Then, so subscribe, then you won't miss it. In the meantime, I will present some more analysis. There are now things that help so much better than just looking at the level. <laughs> These analysis show me when something sounds good and when bad, independent of the level. Everyone should know that.